Welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and today's segment of JustAskFreeman.com. I am your host Tia Young sitting in for Freeman Owen Jr. and Carolyn Owen. Today we are going to talk about the ANOVA PAYS program, the first of its kind serving the aging population in Northern Virginia. The ANOVA PAYS program specializes in providing medical and social services to those who require medical and nursing care but prefer to live at home rather than a nursing facility. PACE is a three-way agreement between ANOVA Cares for Seniors, the Department of Medical Assistance Services, sometimes called DMAS, and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, sometimes known as CMS. Please welcome the ANOVA PACE team. Mary Van Dyke is on her way, so we hope that she is going to join us after the break. She is a social worker. Lori Spears, recreation therapist, and Rose Mario, manager of marketing and business. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. It's a Good. pleasure. Good. Well, listen, um, I have, um, we're going to be talking about um, the program that you uh, run. And so uh, here's something that I've been um, reading about, and you tell me if this is true. It's been estimated that more than 5.2 million people in the United States have Alzheimer's disease. Uh, I think it is sometimes called AD, is that correct? Sometimes mm -hmm. called AD. And that the most common uh, name for this is, um, uh, or the most common form of it is dementia. Uh, AD is expected to triple by 2050, primarily due to the increases in longevity of the age population. The first wave of baby boomers will reach 85 years in 2031. First, I'd like you to tell me what is Alzheimer's? What is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Are they one of the same or are they two different um, diseases? So dementia is sort of like the umbrella term for all the different disease, diseases. Mm -hmm. And Alzheimer's is one of the disease processes within that dementia umbrella. Okay. It's probably the most common and the most recognizable um, that I think uh, people experience and so. On that end, mm -hmm. okay, all right, very good. Um, Rose, most of us are familiar with the name. Everybody knows about ANOVA Hospital. But what does PACE mean? And who is eligible to participate in the program? So. PACE stands for, it's an acronym for a Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly, P-A-C-E. Mm -hmm. um, and so, like you mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a partnership between uh, federal, so CMS and state, DMAS, mm -hmm. and then ANOVA to provide PACE as an alternative for people who need nursing home type care, but again, they prefer to stay in the community or what that really means is just at home, wherever that home is, right. um, instead of being in a nursing facility. Okay. And so everybody's familiar with ANOVA hospitals. And so PACE is actually a program from the whole ANOVA health system. We're not necessarily tied to a single hospital. We serve the whole um, ANOVA service area. Okay. So that includes, uh, so to be eligible for PACE, our service area is um, all of Fairfax County, mm -hmm. the cities of Fairfax and Falls Church, okay. the um, Arlington County, okay. city of Alexandria, uh, Prince William County, and the cities of Manassas and Manassas Park. So okay. those are all sort of, that's our service area at this okay. point. Do you have any other uh, states um, around the nation that are looking at PACE, uh, NOVA PACE as a model? Yes, actually. So across the nation there are, I think PACE, there are PACE programs in uh, 32 or 33 oh, um, okay. states. Okay. Um, That's good. And then in Virginia, there's eight different uh, PACE programs, just like Innova Cares for Seniors, um, but in different geographic regions. And right. so PACE is tied to, to the geographic region. So mm -hmm. there's PACE programs in Richmond uh -huh. and uh, like the Hampton Roads area right. and, and Charlottesville uh -huh. and um, sort of closer to the mountains. And so. That's right. Yes. Well, Lori, you are a recreation therapist. I am. So what is your day like? So my day um, pretty much consists of, I plan the programs for the participants at PACE. Um, I'm part of a, an interdisciplinary team. We have a calendar of events that go on each day. So our typical participant starts their day at mm -hmm. their home. We, um, most of our participants 
live in with their families. We do have some that safely live mm -hmm. on their own. Um, so the ones drivers. that live, you said some that live on their own. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't realize that. I thought that um, everybody there was uh, not, well, they were dependent upon someone else. So you have actually people that come every day. Do they drive themselves there, some people? Are they able to, their own transportation or? We don't, I currently I don't think we have anybody that drives. They all take, use our right. bus, the buses, the pace buses that we okay. have. Um, and sometimes we have people that get received home care mm -hmm. in the mornings to okay. help them get ready um, to come to the center. We have a lot of drivers for pace that mm -hmm. come to their house and pick them up and bring them to the center. Okay, that's good. And then on the uh, weekends, um, you know, are you able to get um, uh, other people to come in and give like respite care on the weekends if that's needed? So, yes. So if a participant family requests or a caregiver requests um, respite mm -hmm. care, we find respite care for them. for them. Or um, on the weekends, we do have participants that do receive home care. Mm -hmm. and. Their home care is task-based on specific needs that they might need done in the home. Okay, that's good. And do you? What about when you say recreation? Are they doing exercises or so are our they doing day, fun things? Yes, <laughs> we're the fun group. Um, so <laughs> the Adult Day Health Center, um, we we provide the activities for them so that they're not staying in their home. They have a place to come and socialize and with their friends or peers and we provide the programming. Our day starts off with when they arrive at the center they're um, greeted by our life enrichment specialists which right. are certified nursing assistants. Um, they, so after they arrive they come and they have breakfast and coffee and we encourage them to socialize with their peers and while we still continue to wait for other buses to come in with the participants right. um, throughout the morning, we encourage them to participate in activities such as reading the newspaper, books, um, magazines, mm -hmm. doing word searches, crossword puzzles, right. um, and some people like doing the calming coloring with the adult. Okay, yes. Coloring. My mother um, likes that, the yes, coloring. She, she does. does. She likes she the really coloring. Does. <laughs> and um, so while, like I said, while we're waiting for more participants to arrive. Mm -hmm. um, we encourage that. Um, our programming starts around 9.30 with the talking and doing reality orientation, going over with a calendar, what's going, activities are going on for the day, and then we do morning news, and then we do exercise, because okay. it's proven so evidence. it's got a full day. It, it is, is a full, full day. day. That's it's good. proven evidence that uh -huh. exercise and physical activity um, and older uh, makes healthier um, lifespan of the older right. adult. So um, that's very important. I like to start our morning big program off. I try to do like a cognitive mm -hmm. activity for um, memory stimulation um, or we'll have a music therapist that comes in oh, um, every other week mm -hmm. and she does work with her participants or we'll have musical entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I really like to go ahead and focus on our cognitive activities in the morning uh -huh. versus the afternoon time. Good. So you have a full day. We do. I have a question uh, for Rose. This is a $64,000 question. <laughs> is this a service that is extremely expensive and that people that have money are the only ones that can participate in it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a great question actually. So um, it's not just for people with money. It's with the PACE program, the beauty of it is whether you have financial resources where you do have a lot of savings or if you are um, eligible for benefits like Medicare, Medicaid, um, that's what determines how much you're going to pay for the PACE program. Mm -hmm. You know, you pay basically what you can based on those benefits. Mm -hmm. So for people that, majority of the people that are enrolled in PACE are um, dual eligible and so that means they're, they're eligible for Medicare and Medicaid and in those cases the Medicaid office through an application they'll determine how much that monthly patient payment amount or monthly copay okay. would be for all the services that they get through the PACE program. So, okay. um, and so it's, again it's all-inclusive care so they, they would make that determination and we help with that application process because it is pretty cumbersome. So. Okay, so it, and is, is that the reason for the three organizations working together? 
together. Yes. So you're taking different things. Well, right. what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break here, and we okay. will be right back. So don't touch that dial. Thank you for joining us as we continue our discussion about the ANOVA PACE Cares for Seniors program. Well, I just learned that Mary is not going to be joining us. She's doing her best to get here, but the traffic is just overwhelming today. <laughs> so um, I have a question, and this is something that uh, I was going to ask Mary earlier, and maybe you guys can answer it. Um, what does it mean to be nursing home eligible? I have a senior mom. and. That was a term that was used over and over again, and I never really quite fully understood what that means. Right, and that's quite common, you know, where yeah. a lot of family members and caregivers, they'll come to us and they'll say, oh, well, my mom's not nursing home eligible because mm -hmm. it really is difficult to understand. What it really is, is just somebody who needs help with their activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. So activities of daily living can be things like um, help with showers, help with getting dressed in the morning, mm -hmm. um, help with meals, um, getting them set up. Um, it could be help with, you know, transferring in and out of chairs, um, things like that. If people have to, you know, need help and support to do that, it could be help with mobility, anybody with sort of your continuous uh, medical or nursing needs. Right. Um, and so it's just as long as somebody needs help on a daily basis, and, and for a lot of caregivers, that's probably the, the hardest part is thinking about all the little things that they're doing to really help their loved ones at right, home. And so right. I think as caregivers, you sort of just gradually build and, and take on one more task. And you know, like first mom might need help with mm. grocery shopping, and then may maybe she needs help with meal, preparing meals. Mm. Um, and then it'll be something else, like mom will need help with uh, getting in the shower, just maybe getting it set up or getting dressed. And so it's a very a gradual thing. And so when, when caregivers ask if they're nursing home eligible, it really does take a minute to just sort of think about all the little things things that you're that doing, doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. to take care of your loved ones. What are so. some of the challenges of caregivers? You know, I think in this area, in Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia is a very busy area. People yes. are working right. um, right. and working long hours. We have traffic and commutes. Um, so that's something that's unique to Northern Virginia. But just as a caregiver, um, some of the challenges can be just, you know, not knowing is that some people have planned to be the caregiver for their mom or dad and sometimes they haven't and right. so it's it's generally their first time doing that and so right. there's a lot of uncertainty and they, they like the they like the support that the PACE team can provide them because we can help kind of coach them and, and get right. them to be more comfortable in that That's role. That's right. So. Laurie, we talked about um, uh, therapeutic recreation. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit more about what that entails? So therapeutic recreation, um, so as a recreation therapist, I'm a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. So with therapeutic recreation, we use different modalities to help um, a participant and uh, to enhance their physical, um, emotional, cognitive, physical activity um, activities of life. Um, we try to in maintain improve um, mm -hmm. those qualities of life and make them more a sense of independence. Um, right, that's right. Okay. So as a recreation therapist, we try, we don't focus on the person's disability. We focus on their abilities, not their disabilities. And we like to look at a person, their whole, at their, at, at right. their whole. Uh, Rose, back to you um, with the caregivers. Do you ever um, recognize or can you uh, determine whether or not there are some family members, caregivers, who just have a hard time initially accepting that mom or dad or uncle is going through this? Mm -hmm. What, you know, what, what, what are the emotional signs of that? How can you? Oh, gosh, you know, for some, everybody's so different when it comes to that. You know, there yeah. are some people who are just in denial. They just don't see it. They say, oh, no, mom is fine. There is nothing wrong with her. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they'll come to us and they'll say, well, she's not nursing home eligible. She wouldn't be eligible for PACE. And, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and then, you know, as when they bring their mom in for a visit and for a tour and they see that she actually can match up well with some of the participants in our population, mm -hmm. then I think sometimes it's, it's eye-opening. Um, so sometimes it's denial. Um, sometimes it's just frustration because they don't really know how to manage the care. Mm -hmm. um, or sometimes they're a sandwich between taking care of them, their parents, and then they might have young children of their own. Oh, they're that working. they're yeah. Right. Um, so what do you guys do to, to help? To kind of bridge that gap, do you have classes, or uh, are you able to send uh, people to the home to help out, or right? How, so how I would say, that? you know, really, it's the whole place, the the whole plan of care as a whole would help that caregiver, mm -hmm. because when that person enrolls in Pace, you know, there's all of these different aspects that Pace provides. So, like for example, they might come to the Pace Center right. and just have the having those days where mom is at the Pace Center for a couple of days a week. That might just be enough of the peace of mind that that caregiver is looking for, right. knowing that mom is coming to the Pace Center mm -hmm. and engaged with the the therapeutic recreational activities that we have and so it's a okay. different routine and almost you know when people enroll in the PACE program they they sort of evolve over the first couple of months as they just get into the structure of things and have all these different aspects of care all these mm -hmm. professional eyes that are looking at them and, and taking care of their discipline so for like therapeutic rec we have a dietitian social work the physician all the nurses and so all these different pieces come together so you have doctors nurses you have everybody there does that mean that they give up uh, maybe whoever was their uh, primary care prior to pace Right, so it's like a question. system. Yes, yes. Talk a little bit about that. So, yeah, that's a great question. So it's really all-inclusive care. So that means all their medical care is included, and part of that is their primary care. So most of the time when people enroll in PACE, they do have to give up their primary care physician to come to the program. Okay. Um, and at that point, when they're nursing home eligible, sometimes it, they need a little bit more time with their primary care physician. And some, mm -hmm. some physicians may not have the, the length of time within their 15-minute appointment to hit on everything that um, a geriatric patient needs. Mm -hmm. And so at the Pace Center, we have our um, people who enroll in Pace, they, they take on the Pace Medical Director as their primary care physician. Right. And um, so it's a geriatrician. So it's someone who specializes in the geriatric population. So mm -hmm. not just one single organ or disease, just, just the whole the whole person and so all the diseases right. that Laurie when you are with um, a patient how much time do you spend with them or does it vary uh, depending on the level of uh, Alzheimer's or dementia that the person is experiencing yes um, I would say like I do get to spend a good amount of time throughout the day you know participating um, with the participants in, act, in the activities that are going on. I think that's very important to be out there engaging in, with them. Um, and yes, the amount of time depends on how much um, attention or care right. that they would need during an activity. Right. Um, we have our life enrichment specialists that are able to assist with programming as well. Mm -hmm. So we can focus on on a lot of the participants that do need help with mm -hmm. activities. So a person that comes in and they um, maybe are in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's, you wouldn't spend maybe as much time, would they do projects on their own? We encourage participants that, mm -hmm. to try things on their own. So if it's somebody on their earlier stages of their dementia process, it's just the eyes on. Like right. I like to you know, give them that sense of independence right. but still you know, encourage them if they need help with something to let us know so we were able to help. And, you know, when you're out there, you're, you're able to keep eyes on people right. and kind of you can tell when they need help with a program or an activity. So mm -hmm. I like you, being there to be able to help. Do you guys, and this is for either one of you uh, or both of you if you want to chime in on that, um, do you encourage families to come and participate in the activities or is it okay once they're in we've got them for the next five, six, seven, eight hours and you rather not have, uh, you know, family members coming in? How does that work? I'll speak, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so at the beginning when we do have new um, participants enroll, I, we encourage family not to come, to come yeah. at the beginning just so that they are able to adapt to our program without their loved one being there. Um, later on as they are, you know, they've been there and they're starting to get the routine of the day down, I think it's great that family are friends stop in and engage in programming with them. Um, with PACE being a shared partnership with family, 
and our interdisciplinary team, um, we encourage when they do go home that they participate mm -hmm. in leisure activities with them or take them into the community. Um, I think that's still very important throughout all the stages. Right. So, so what, what do you do, how do you handle um, the evaluation process? Because I, I'm thinking, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that a person comes in, they're there so many days or so many months, and then there's an evaluation. Is that done uh, in the facility, or is that done at the uh, uh, patient's home? So when somebody first uh, is considering enrollment in the PACE program, mm -hmm. part of that assessment is done you know, before they enroll, where part of it's done in their home. Um, and members of the interdisciplinary team, for example, our home care nurse coordinator, mm -hmm. our occupational therapist, and our transportation manager, who is kind of the main guy who oversees our fleet. We have about 15 wheelchair accessible vans that go wow. all over. 15? Um, mm -hmm, oh, all wow. over uh -huh. to you know um, all the different, where we're, wherever somebody lives to pick them up and bring them to the pay center and so so those three um, people usually go to the first part of that assessment in their home um, sometimes other disciplines will go as well as needed depending on on the case okay. and then the the second part of the assessment takes place at the pay center mm -hmm. and that's where the our, uh, participant would look with um, meet with the physician and the nurse the dietitian Lori our recreational therapist okay. and our social worker and so right. based on those two days based on what the team's medically assessing and then the and then the feedback that the participant mm -hmm. and their family provides mm -hmm. as far as the services that they are needing. Um, the a plan of care will be written individualized based on that and that's um, so then they that's their first plan of care when they first start. So that's how they enroll and of course you know things may change or needs may change and so every six months there's another review of that formal plan of care or as needed um, okay. if you have any kind of significant okay. change okay. or anything like that. So we have we have about a, a minute and 40 seconds to go so if you can kind of summarize for me uh, if I'm someone and I'm coming in the first time uh, to just talk to you about uh, my loved one becoming a part of it, what are the steps to that? What are, who am I seeing first to sit down and, and talk about it? So the first person you're generally, when people are first considering PACE, is the enrollment uh, coordinator. Okay. So the enrollment coordinator is the expert on all the different aspects that it would take to get into the PACE program. Mm -hmm. So getting a PACE screening or determining if their uh, loved one is eligible for the level of care that PACE provides. Okay. That's usually the first step. And, and the, the social worker works work right. with them on that. Right. Okay. So the enrollment coordinator will work with the social worker in the community for that. Um, They'll also work with people with the whole Medicaid application process if that's something that they're applying oh, for. Okay. Um, or, and then also coordinate their assessment. So that's kind of the first So it's a person. system. Yes, it is. yeah, they help you navigate the system. That's, right. they're, that's good. They're, they're a key person. Well, ladies, I am so appreciative of, of you guys coming out today. Thank you so much. This well, has thank been, you for having uh, us. Very insightful. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anova Pace Cares for Seniors is a wonderful program providing you or your loved ones with a dedicated care team comprised of physicians, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all other health care professionals. Leave no option on the table when it comes to caring for your parents or yourself because it is going to be creative programs like Anova Pace Cares to assist in the covering uh, of all the needs of our aging population. Freeman and Carolyn will be back next week but I want to remind you to email justaskfreeman.com to get a copy of the free toolkit about the financial services opportunities that are available to help you pay for your retirement. We're going to close out this show with a short video clip from the recent Anova Pace Cares grand opening with comments made by Senator Mark Warner. Thank you for watching our segment today and join us next week, same time, same place. Bye bye. I thank everybody at ANOVA uh, for the great job you do, not just with the PACE program, but in terms of, of taking care of the health care of so many people around Northern Virginia, including my family. Uh, we've had a number of incidents, and, and ANOVA's always been there. Sean, let me also thank everything about the PACE program. You know, um, a lot of times where I work, people talk about what doesn't work. PACE works. PACE is an idea that we're going to have to continue to grow as our parents and loved ones all grow older. The whole notion of being able to age in place 
is really the direction that I think modern healthcare needs to take us. And the PACE program is a living, breathing example of that ability for, for seniors and others to come to a setting, a one-stop shop, get the assistance they need, provide those caregivers some of that respite and relief, uh, and it just wins on every account. And let me tell you, T, you, you told me, told us your story, you know, and you didn't know, say you didn't know exactly what to do. You know, I was governor. I had the same kind of thing, and I didn't know where to turn. You know, my mom had um, Alzheimer's for 11 years. Nine years, she didn't speak. And my dad and sister took care of her in home with a little bit of additional help. Uh, but they didn't know where to turn. There was, it was not here in Virginia, it was up in Connecticut, but there was no PACE program that could have given my mom the kind of relief that, that, uh, that your mom is getting. 